Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here with my continuing playthrough of Hearts of Iron 4 with the Total War mod, which I'm ha still having serious problems with. Um, and again, what makes it so frustrating, there's so much I really love about the mod, it's just this fort spam everywhere and also whatever the hell they're doing with having Vichy France and Free France battle each other. I don't get that at all, but um, that seems wacky to me. Um, so a lot of wacky stuff going on. Um, are you going to stream Slytherin again? I don't know. I, well, I presume so. I don't know when or what. But we'll talk about that um, not in the middle of an episode. Uh, or no, I actually do want to talk about that a little bit. Um, Okay, Expeditionary Force from Slovakia. Yeah, we might need that. Three divisions, we don't know what... Well, okay, um, how are we doing at building... Okay, we have a lot... We need to produce, we need to spam out... Oh, no, this is where we want to be. Um, rubber factories, synthetic rubber factories. something that the U.S. really needed to do in World War II, and it did that, but it was a real difficulty. Okay, now let's come down here and put them up top. Oh, we can do a couple more. I'll throw one out here in East Prussia. There we go. Now we're doing that. And because we've just taken France, a bunch more, but let's build things that don't require rubber, like radio equipment and horses or horse equipment. Because obviously you don't build horses in factories that require steel. But we can see some of their um, horse um Wagons and other things probably would require some transport that would support equipment Is regular support equipment. Okay, let's throw some regular support equipment, which I Don't really know how we would specify that more than um, Don't really know how well, you know, obviously they're using the standard picture here don't know if you know the story here, but originally this icon here had a red cross in it. There was, I don't know exactly who or what entity, but somebody sort of pointed out to them, uh, they can't quite do that. And, uh, you know, uh, I think some sort of legal thing within Europe or whatever. So they went over to the White Cross because the Red Cross is sort of a... Um, you know, the Red Cross organization or something, but I do know that the American whatever, yeah, they, we would still do it in red, but they there was a little thing, so they changed the icon standard, but so this is obvious standard icon, but you know, includes radios here. Um, but they have it as a separate, which is fine. Um, what else do we need here? that isn't rubber based particularly because these vehicles will be rubber based we're gonna have some rubber i presume and rubber rubber is the reason why gasoline was um rationed in america not that they're yeah they wanted to reduce the amount of um gasoline consumed to a degree but their real concern was the rubber tire rubber used in tires that was the real concern for the american government and more dockyards of a total of five more so let's do one of these and we have a research slot open Okay. 
You know how much I'm an infrastructure kind of guy. Let's do this. I'm just because of previous things. Now I was asked why I haven't been well researching some of these um, texts. Um, I just have higher priorities. It's not a dislike them or think that they're not useful. Just things I want to do first. You were perhaps using some units with heavy artillery for breakthrough forts. Ah, yeah, that might be a good idea. My concern is, um, well, is this okay? One hundred fifty millimeter. That would. Mm, Especially as we may be seeing a lot more. Good idea there, Arno. Um, I really don't want to create um, really unhistoric units. Uh, you know, like, like have... Um, half of this all be artillery or something like that you know things that are really wacky um i think the game should be able to be played not like and you're you're absolutely right in that you know they definitely different divisions in the different wella within germany had different um equipment layouts um different um brigades within the u.s did and the german army did have specifically heavy artillery units and if we just, yeah, there's been a little bit of talk about the idea. Um, and it's just, I think, just at the idea level for um, Hearts of Iron is that you could have, um, say, core support units that were not um, like divisions, but would be attached to one of these core units that would support um you know the ground the ground units and so well you know i i like your idea but right now we're going to try to s rush into here to capture this and then we may get these guys um i think i'm just going to see about doing that instead uh you guys um, go there and there along with you across the rhine you come down into here and here. Oh yeah, no, it's it it's it's a good idea. I just Sort of kind of honestly hoping that we just take this down fast. Um, oh, don't we? want to do though we don't have the much of anything for that we need more steel do we okay more steel let's see why don't we get it from Sweden and we need more chromium Turkey. We still have three dockyards. Oh. Okay. Well, another thing of subs. And we could also improve some of our generals. Let's 
we have the points, let's see which ones we have up here that we could, um, Gorilla Fighter. Okay, I guess we'll spend that for Dudarian, Rommel, also Gorilla Fighter, I don't know why, I guess just that it comes off a Trickster. No, you can't. Um, defensive or offensive doctrine. We want to go offensive because he's leading Panzer units. Oh, let me see if that's somebody's house. Okay. Von Rundstedt. Organization first. Yeah, we'll do that. I like that. We'll build some siege artillery units in this mod. I don't know just exactly what um, we can build in that terms. We can take a quick look. Uh... Well, we could do Fortress Buster. wonder if that would be useful. Yep, we'll take that. Okay. Um, I remember Von Lieb is a um, Fortress Buster. So if, um, let's also... There we go. Now, for equipment type, what do we currently have? Um, 150, okay, we have, well, some railway guns. That's maybe what they're presuming we would use. Um, what sort of units do we have that might be? Okay, well let's let's at least come here and grab this and we're going to duplicate this. New division, we're gonna call this um Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna save that. So now we have this division with infantry with art. Um, okay, so these are our current options. Unless we come over here for support brigades. Um, railway guns. Hmm, recovery rate, soft attack, hard attack. Movement is slows up somewhat. Forest movement by 60%, 70%. So, okay, so we don't want to do railway guns unless it's for a specific specialty purpose setup. Not just, you know, have a bunch of divisions with railway guns. Um... But we can definitely see about coming back over here to these. Um, that is medium artillery, um, motorized heavy artillery. That is not so bad, and that we could do. Um, Trying to think. Yeah, they did heavy artillery that was that was um, horse drawn. Germans did, so we'll do that. We do have a lot of points here to play with this. 
But, um... Okay, I'm just looking to see if there's... Well, that's something we could... Oh, well, we don't have enough radio equipment as it is. So I don't want to spam that out everywhere. Uh, I'm just looking to see what we might also attach. I don't really... Extra logistics... Supply use, supply. No, I think we're just going to keep it with um, one extra heavy artillery unit here. So, um, I think that'll be at the bottom. So we'll train one of these and add. So we'll train two of these upright. Well, three of these. We still have even, oh, we didn't get the full five across, that's why. And now we need even more steel. And chromium, okay, well, um, turkey, let's hit them up for complete, and Sweden. And oil, well, we can get more from Romania. And it's also a very large Vichy force. Flight of Rudolf Hess. France has capitulated. Okay, four heavy tanks and some equipment there. You guys rush over to here to deal with the British. Now, why the hell does Vichy get all this territory? It's things like that that I'm just very hard on. I'll, I'll admit that I'm hard on it, but I think I'm right in, in being hard on it. Okay, Toy Jet, thanks for being here. I do appreciate that. Is Vichy in the Axis? Um, well, we can check that out. I, th I presume so. Um, Vichy France. Um, Vichy is a Reich Protectorate of Germany. And it's in the war and um, same faction Axis. So yes. Which wouldn't be the case at this point in the war. So again, I, I think they're smoking something to have them actually in the war, in in the Axis, now. You get on rails and occupy out to there. Liquification, very good. Uh, I think we're going to do that. 
that. those troops there while we try to cross the river. Okay, um, move on Antwerp and kind of funny the Dutch and Belgium are doing better than the French. Yeah, um, like I think we sort of talked about before. I have good respect for the Dutch. Uh, I disrespect their really, quite honestly, their lack of preparation for the war. Um, but they did fight. The Belgians r did fight in World War I, at the beginning of World War I, pretty damn hard. They did not fight very hard at all in World War II. Um, I, you know, when you're talking about Germany of World War I, and they did behave quite badly, and I'm not going to suggest they didn't. Hungry demands Vovodina. Okay, sure, whatever. I, in light of their previous success in, oh, in obtaining return of lost territory, the Hungarians are now demand. They, oh, okay, Yugoslavia returned Vovodina. As Yugoslavs try to find a diplomatic solution, the Hungarian impatience has already become more and more clear, and should Yugoslavs reject this demand, it is unlikely that a peaceful solution will be found. Okay, they are now surrounded. their capital. French equipment, very useful. Maginot line ruined. So we're removing land forts now. And we're also removing naval, naval dockyards and civilian factories. I don't know why. Why? Heavily fortified Maginot Line was damaged in the fighting and is not much use against attacks from the West. Well, one, that's not true because a lot of the um, Maginot Line was... Still intact at the end of the war, uh, you know the Battle of France, the war with France. A lot of the Maginot Line was things like the Dragon's Teeth, you know the the blocks of concrete that were um, done up and things like that, which are good from either direction. So sure, a lot of the bunkers w would be facing the wrong way, most assuredly. Um, but but what the hell are all the rest of these factories being removed for? Not true. Okay, don't please explain, Arno. Uh, not true. What? I've been saying a bunch of things. So. Um. And ugh.
Imagine another line was... Yeah, that's right. Okay, what they're saying is un, untrue. Yes, I, I agree. Yeah, it was relatively unscathed. There were some German offensives sort of in the later phase of the Battle of France that did penetrate the Maginot Line that did very, very limited, like you say, um, damage to it. Um, the Germans heavily gutted it of weaponry to use to build the Atlantic Wall. You know, took, took a lot of the guns out of it and ammo and and um, support elements to the guns, you know, ammunition hoists and other things like that, and used it to build the, uh, what are you, what am I clicking on? No, no, you don't want to go down there. And I don't know why you're, they're removing the dockyards and civilian and military factories. Um, is it because this is now Germany and... So this should be occupied land and not controlled land, or, you know, not annexed land. That's another thing with this game that I'm just... Nope. They've already gotten part of Yugoslavia here. That? What the hell? I'm serious, people. What the hell? I, I remember I saw the, the, the event demanding this there. But what the hell? How is this historical? Uh, I'm, I'm rhetorically, I mean, if you guys on chat can, can answer this, I would love to hear if you guys, and obviously you didn't do this, so you, you, it's not your place to defend this, but what the hell? Yes, after the fall and breakup of Yugoslavia, this was, I believe, given to some of this at least. I don't know if all of this was given to Hungary, but some of this was given to Hungary. Um, initially, there was sort of a line drawn, almost I, at least in the maps that I've seen, though they may be um, sort of generic and not not done well. Sort of a line drawn down more or less the center of Yugoslavia, and even where you form form Croatia, there was sort of the um, Greek or the Italian area of like Croatia and whatever. And those were collaborationist troops and whatever were equipped with Italian weapons and Italy was doing occupying it. And the other side, the inland side, the eastern side, however you want to describe it, was German, generally speaking. Yes, I know that a bunch of this territory was given to um, Bulgaria. And I do believe some of this, I don't know if all of this, I just quite honestly don't know. And yes, we are dealing with this effing state mechanism here. And that could be why this not just a province by province but still but this didn't happen historically and well, may, well maybe they are I would have them immediately be in the um, nope if Hungary were to demand this my reading of the situation is that that would throw them into the um, the Allies' camp. Because, again, I am not... So I haven't researched it. Like, like I've researched the um, pretty, pretty heavily the on solutions leading up to it and some of these other things. But the sort of... I haven't made... Basically saying I haven't made the event... Um, tree dealing with Yugoslavia here. I have much more with like Romania and whatnot, but um, there was a bunch of German pressure for them to join the Axis. Not, and I don't know that joining the Axis at that point was meaning um, joining the war. You know, actually like, yeah, we're at war with you, whoever you is. It's more like, yeah, we're, you know, militarily allied with you kind of thing. We're sort of your best buddies. Sort of like joining the anti turn pact, but a bit more than that. And 
because obviously um, Germany and Japan were in the anti comintern pact, and Japan never goes to war with the Soviet Union. Bulgaria never goes to war with the Soviet Union. They go to war with the Western Allies, but not with uh, the Soviet Union. That is why you don't see any um, Bulgarian troops ever serving on the Eastern Front, because they didn't go there. Um, they went to war with... I don't know if they officially went to war with Greece. Obviously, they took back basically these two provinces, occupied a bit more of Greece, and occupied a bunch of um, former Yugoslav territory, and got this these pro two provinces here um, from Romania. And so it was partially the pressure, and this is what, when I originally saw the event, the pressure of Yugoslavia, Bulgaria, uh, don't think so much Romania, um, Italy, oh, this book, um, uh, uh, I'm really, ha he seems to have, a um, book that I'm currently reading is on Operation Sea Lion. Um, seems to have a lot of good history, but damn, the, either the author is really, really sloppy, and he just may be a very, very sloppy author, or he doesn't know history very well. Like I said, he had some v sort of talked a little bit about the Roman invasion. He claimed in his first sentence, though, he later deeply, barely acknowledged, well, the last time Britain was invaded was 1066. No, the last time there was a major invasion and conquest of Britain was in 1688, when the Dutch, yes, Arno, the Dutch, successfully invaded Britain, and William of Orange becomes William III of England. Now, there was no major battle. That is quite true. There was no major battle. It was a, um, in the English part of it, it, it goes off without any major battle. The English commanders of the army refuse to engage the Dutch army, uh, even though King James wants them to. Now, there are major battles in Ireland. There are some battles up in Scotland, more in 1689, not 1688, but the Williamite Conquest, which definitely goes into Scotland in very heavy battles, Battle of the Boyne and other things, and Ogram and other places in Ireland, the Dutch invasion. So the last invasion of the British Isles, if you put in Ireland as part of it, with major battles, was the Dutch conquest of um, Britain. And But the author was talking about, well, some English kings, really more chieftains, were dealing with Caesar or whatever. There were no English kings! Or chieftains. There were British. The English hadn't showed up yet. The English hadn't showed up yet. They were sort of post Roman Britain, is when the English show up and it becomes Ingles land, England. They were Britons. They weren't. That could just be sloppy use of terms. Now, also, at times he, he mentions um, talking about the Roman occupation of. England and Wales. And when he's saying that, okay, that could be just geographical um, definitions. But the author is sloppy. And so one of the things the author says, well, Hitler didn't see the ocean because they were talking about the British or the German Navy and whatnot. Well, Hitler didn't see the ocean until, for the first time until he was 45 years old. And of course, he was born in a landlocked country. Well, I don't know where the hell the author thinks he was born. Maybe he thinks he was... I don't know where the hell he thinks he was born. But Hitler was born in Austria. Austria was not a landlocked country. It had a very nice port of Trieste. I'm not talking about Austro-Hungarian Empire. I'm talking about the sort of Kingdom of Austria. 
as part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire when Hitler was born and up until the time that Hitler leaves Germany or leaves Austria to move to Germany and of course Germany has an ocean front Austria had an ocean front so this author looks at the modern map of Austria and think that that's Austria no Austria had the port of Trieste it does not go over to being Italian until Italy's on the winning side of World War One. So this author is really, really sloppy or bad on his history, which makes me fear for what he's telling me about the focus of the book is supposedly dealing. I'm only about a third of the way through it. Um, Operation Sea Lion, and so I don't know how sloppy he's being on that. Uh, you know, I'm just these are simple things, and you could be going, "Well, gamer, you're just being picky." Hey, the Austrians had a a navy. I remember an Austrian battleship, and there's some film of it. Um, gets uh, torpedoed, I think it is, and the captain just sort of like goes, "Hmm, we're sinking." And it stands there, "We're sinking, yeah." And you see the the ship turn over at some point and all the sailors are running from you know running up uh, to the underside of the ship you know trying to say because the, the Austrian captain refuses to to um, signal abandoned ship and so it's in World War one you know I, I'm guessing maybe sunk by the Italians or something I don't know um, so I mean it, the Austrian Navy was sort of outdated and whatnot but they had a real Navy they had a real Navy, not just some riverine forces or things. They had some battleships, not many, and not new, newish. Well, I, mean, I don't know, maybe sort of new, one or two newish ones. But, um, yeah, but you know, that's one or two versus like sixty or something British capital ships at the beginning of World War One or whatever. So it's a really small navy, but it's a navy. So yeah, um, and so. Italy has demands on, you know, they've taken um, Albania and whatnot. So Italy is sort of like, and, and Hungary and Bulgaria are all, are all eyeing. And of course, Germany sort of wants to get back um, sort of this little bit up here, maybe a little bit of what is Slovenia. Um, and so either you, and this is sort of what Hitler is, is telling the um the Yugoslavs, you either join the Axis or, well, um, you're going to have what's happened to um, Romania and, you know, forcing Romania to give up this part, forcing Romania to give up this, and, oh, the Soviets eventually, I don't know if they will in this mod, but take this section in sort of like, you know, which is more, eh, maybe a little less because uh, this, I think... Maybe some of that. These two, I th think, sort of were part of Austro-Hungary um, in World War One or before World War One, part of the Hungarian part of the the empire. So they've still still grown, and they they grabbed this off of you know. So so you know, Hung Romania at the beginning of this. 1936 period is at its greatest extent so it really wasn't trying to get so much uh, bits of Yugoslavia but it's all being parted out and that's what um, is being threatened to happen to Yugoslavia and so you either join or that's sort of going to happen to you and you really don't want a war because we Germans, Italians, with our local allies, are going to be able to crush you. Obviously, they did that. Um, but, you know, this just to me is ridiculous. I know. Well, we're going to end the episode here. I know it's just more me ranting about this, but... Um, don't know if that makes a good show. I'm a bit tired and a bit irritable. Sorry about that. Um, so thanks for liking the videos. If you would, if you haven't already, please subscribe. And of course, I love your, hearing your thoughts on all this, whether you think this alternate history is a good idea. Like, hey, yeah, Vichy France gets to take back big chunks of territory or not. I don't know. Um, 
So, see you next time for more Hearts of Iron.